بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمد كثيرا طيبا مبارك فيه وصلوة الله وسلامه على النبي الأمين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. so لنواصل مع قراءتنا الكتاب عشر قواعد في تزكية النفس. so we we'll continue reading from uh, the work about the ten principles, ten guiding principles. Uh, towards purifying the soul, the Sheikh Al Alam Abdul Razak Ibn Al Abdul Muhsin Al Badr, Allah. And so now we are on Al Qaeda Al Salisa. We are on the sixth, uh, the sixth principle. And the title of the sixth principle, he says, Iraq al Manafid, the the, the closing of the gates التي تخرج الإنسان على التسكية that take mankind away from purification وتعبده عن الفضيلة and distance him from Allah's grace, from Allah's fadl وتوقعه في الرذيلة the same word we mentioned last night and puts him in uh, depravity so we mentioned uh, last night in the fifth qaida, uh, he mentioned radha'il wa hiya jama' radila. So it's the, just the plural of the same word. So essentially what he said, that part of purifying the soul is actively, not passively, but actively, ikhraqul manafil, closing the gates of which that lead to certain kinds of, uh, of displeasurable actions. He said, the one that worships, <clears throat> the one that worships Allah, al-Abd, there is a desperate need, an urgent need, haja masa, there is an urgent need, to go to those gateways or those doors, allati, that while they are open, they defile the soul. Uh, right? And they they corrupt it. And so he said, I'm going to then give an example from the Sunnah of the Prophet. So I'm going to give you an example from the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, of the dangers, right? The dangers of continuing to uh, uh, continuing to, to to not act upon closing right these doors, and that will lead to the loss, right? The loss of one's religion. ففي الحديث النبوي عليه السلام قال النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام says well, there's a uh, there's a statement of the prophet may Allah bless him in which he said ضرب الله مثلا صراط مستقيما so Allah Taala gives us a parable in this and this is أخرجه uh, الإمام uh, أحمد رحمه الله this is a uh, hadith that's collected by Imam Ahmed ibn al Hanbal may Allah have mercy on him in his musnad and so he says that Allah is going to then give a parable of a straight path. Because we all, إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ So obviously he's also making a reference to what is mentioned in not only Surah Al-Fatiha, but also a reference to يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ It's a reference to what will be like on the Day of Judgment. عَلَى جَنْمَلَتَيْ الصِّرَاطَ سُورَانِ So he said that, that imagine that there is a straight path and on which there are two sides of that path and each side has what? Uh, surani. They have two walls, essentially. Uh, and then, وَفِيهِمَا abwab مُفَتَّحَ And then along these walls of this straight path, there are open doorways. عَلَى الْأَبْوَابِ And then over these doors, سُطُور There are what? Uh, فَرْخَ There are these, these doorways along both sides of the straight path. But then in addition to this, 
those doorways are covered by like a kind of a curtain. Right? So they're, the doorways are there, but it's also, it obscures one's vision. And then so, imagine coming upon this path, there is a, there is a voice that will call out, O people, all of you go on to the path, everybody go on to the path. And so as people try to go on, then the voice will say from above this path, Then when you try to open up one of the doorways or on the path, thinking that it's an exit from the path, he said that what? Yeah. Uh, way heck, way way. So then this voice will say, Oh, woe to you, right? It's a warner. Way heck, la taftahu, for in the ka in taftahu, right? If you go into this, then he says that, that what? Tell uh, Jah, then you will, you, will, you will go into it with the idea that you won't come back out. Like you'll be lost. You'll go into this doorway and you will not come back out. So now the Prophet Sallallahu he then what Yubayn al-Ma'na, now he's going to explain the meaning of these different symbols in this hadith. And he says what? Awwalan al-Sirat al-Islam. So obviously the clear path, this is Islam. He says, wa-surani, right? The, uh, the, the, two, the two sides of this, he says what? Hudud Allah. These are the limits that Allah puts on His creation for things. كَمَا يُقُولُ عَزُّ وَجَلْ تِلْكَ الْحَدُ اللَّهِ Right? These are the boundaries of Allah and you know, don't supersede them. وَالْأَبْوَابِ الْمُفَتَّحَ Then these open doorways. Because you know, there's a temptation. <laughs> like, I don't know if anybody here has a cat. Cats, cats don't like for doors to be closed. <laughs> like in the house they go nuts. Like my cat will go insane. If, if you don't open the door. So likewise, there's this temptation like, oh, like the curious cat, the door is open, go into it. But again, it's covered by this satar, right? You, you can't see into it. So you don't know what you're going into. You're going into darkness and you don't know what you're going into. So he says that al Fatah had these open doors, what? Muharim Allah. These are the things that Allah Ta'ala has made haram. And we just discussed the hadith last night in the previous qa'ida, that Allah describes ma harama, right, as hima Allah. Allah Ta'ala describes that which He makes impermissible as His private uh, reservation, and we don't have the idhan, we don't have the permission to go into it. <clears throat> so these open doorways, they are the haram that Allah Ta'ala has revealed that we cannot go, go into. And then the beautiful part is, who is the one that's calling out, don't go into it, right? Go on to the path, but don't go into the doors. Who is, the, who, who is this da'i? Who is the one calling out for this? The one calling out to us to save us from going into darkness, to going into unknown things, to protect us is the Book of Allah. وَدَاعِ مِنْ فَوْقِ الصِّرَاطِ And then, in addition, the voice from above the Sirat also calling to us, this is وَعِذَ اللَّهِ فِي قَلْبِ كُلِّ مُسْلِمْ That inside each and every one of us, we have a heart. And inside the heart of every Muslim, there is this thing inside of our body that it knows right from wrong. فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقَوَاهَا and so our heart is naturally wants to incline. Now we also know the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that when we make a sin, we get a black dot on the heart and then when we continue to indulge in that until the entire heart becomes covered. But then when we turn back to Allah, inshallah, it becomes clean again. But how beautiful it is that even the heart itself, it knows right from wrong. So listen, right? listen to the heart. Don't go into matters that are unknown, unseen, and know that the, the, the Qur'an, this is why, again, the Qur'an is not لَيْسَ هُوَ كِتَابَ الشَّعْرِ It's not a book of poetry. وَلَا هُوَ كِتَابَ الْغِنَاءِ It's not a book of music. And I, I'm not, 
You know, I like to listen to Qur'an too, don't get me wrong. Uh, there are many Qur'an that I love to listen to. But I have always made it an intention of mine to be a person that reads the Qur'an more himself than listens to others recite it. Because one, I'm a little bit selfish and I want the ajr of reading the huruf of the Qur'an I just want the reward for myself. And also I want to develop that relation. There's a different relationship with the Book of Allah when you read it yourself. Even if you trip and stumble or you have to read in translation or whatever that it is. There's a different type of relation that you will have with your Islam, with your Lord, when you read the book yourself. And so how beautiful that the Qur'an is a book itself calling out to those that would heed its lessons that it wants to keep us from going into those. And so there's a beautiful verse towards the end of Surah Qaf that it's, on one hand it's beautiful, on the other hand it's sort of terrifying. On one hand Allah Ta'ala says, فَذَكِّرْ بِالْقُرْآنِ he tells the Prophet ﷺ, gives him a command and remind the people by the Qur'an, مَنْ يَخَافُ وَعِيدٌ Who will be the kind of person that will heed, that will take the reminder? The one that fears, the one that fears the Day of Judgment, the one that fears the promise of the Day of Judgment to come. Or like what even Sheikh Ibrahim recited for us uh, in the end of the surah today. That also that he that the, the, the Prophet was told again to remind the people. But then the only people that are gonna be really be of the mindset to heed the reminder and listen to it are the ones that what? As Allah Ta'ala says, in the vidarika, right? In that in the in the dhikra li men kanalahu kalb. Aw al ka wah wah uh uh the one who would sama wah uh uh Shaheed, the one that, that will come, that has awwalan qalb. The qalb is shatan azim. The heart is an enormous matter. We could spend the rest of Ramadan just talking about the heart. So Allah Ta'ala says what? That, you know, in this, in nafidharika, in this thing, there is a uh, dhikra. There's a reminder for the one awwalan, the one that has a heart. Woman, woman, uh, laysa lahu qalb. Who doesn't have a heart? Everybody has a heart. Right? Or... Or the one that will encounter, right, that has a relationship with this book, with this dhikra, with this reminder, and is witness to it. That like when we say we take shahada, when we are shaheed, that we are witnesses, shahad to Allah, la ilaha illahu, we take the shahada, then what? Everything else in the religion is upon us for what? Al-A'mal. We have to then act and, and behave. So the heart is an enormous matter. If it is one that is in a constant relationship with the Book of Allah, it will be inclined to even help you when sometimes, you know, when I might steer right or left, or I might go too far this way or that way, or I start to become tempted with this or that, the heart will be talking to you and counseling you to what? To listen to the, the message of the Quran and to fear the adam of Allah and to have the hope to have the hope to meet Allah. And so it's a beautiful reminder for us. He goes on in some further detail. Inshallah, maybe we'll talk about some of it tomorrow because this one is actually in some ways sort of a, a longer qaida that goes on for, for, for quite some time. But he essentially just rhymes in terms of what he says that what? Develop that relationship with the Qur'an, close those doors. As I said yesterday, sometimes this, this uh, manafid is what? It's like bad people, you know? And, the, 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 you know, we can sometimes have feelings for people like, oh, he's a, he's a cool guy, she's a cool girl, but they have these habits. And every time I turn around, I wind up kind of going somewhere, you know, uh, even for myself. I mean, I, I love my family dearly. But I remember one time my, my middle brother who was a professional musician and he had one of his big breaks and he was playing with this major musical artist. And I happened to be in Chicago at the same time that he was there. And so I came down and I saw him because he's my brother and he said, hey man, after the show, you know, you could come and hang out with the band. And I'm like, uh, he's like, no, no, it's cool, man. You know, well, where's it gonna be? Well, it's gonna be at this bar. And I'm like, no, man, I don't. <laughs> 
That's not really my flavor. Oh, you can have a Diet Coke. How's that? And I, and I know that he meant well. He's my brother. You know, I love him. He loves me. There's, there's no doubt about this. But I have to be very selective about when I encounter him. So when it comes to the, this type of gateway, I have to, no, nah, that's okay. I don't think it would be a good look as a Muslim sitting in a bar having a Diet Coke. I'm not, I'm not willing to go to those lengths for da'wah quite yet. So, you know, be mindful of the people that you spend your, your time around. And don't be shy to, you know, just as you grow as a person throughout your life. You know, the shoes, I mean, trust me, I buy my daughter a pair of shoes like every other week. She's 12. I feel like she's growing. And every time I turn around, I'm shelling out $100 or so for another pair of shoes. But you outgrow things. This is a part of life. There are times in your life, and I, I mean this especially as nasiha to some of the younger people, it is perfectly okay and even normal and commendable that you will outgrow certain types of people. And that don't be shy to leave those people behind, not out of arrogance. And may Allah Ta'ala you know, guide those people that have not arrived at that understanding yet. But don't be shy to leave behind people that will then cause you to be left behind Yom al -Qiyam. So be very, very discerning about who you spend your time with, because more often than not, those are the people are the, as we say, the gateway drug to this or that. They're literally the gateway to hell. And that's exactly what the, the Shaykh is discussing here, inshallah. So, you know, don't be shy and instead have the courage. You know, a lot of times we don't talk about courage as Muslims, shuja'a. But, you know, to be a uh, mutadayyin, to be musalli, to be uh, muhsin, to be salih, right? To be an upright and righteous person. It takes a lot of courage and you will have to step on a few toes. Sometimes you might seem like you're hurting people's feelings by seeking the pleasure of Allah. But don't allow this to discourage you. This is nothing other than the, the, the waswasa of shaitan. This is nothing other than the whispering of shaitan to get you to relent. And as, the, as Allah Ta'ala said, even to the Prophet Wasallam, if we had not strengthened you, you might have inclined towards them a little bit. Not a lot, but even the Prophet Wasallam might a little. And so Allah Ta'ala strengthened him. Of course, we don't have the isma of the Prophet Wasallam, but nonetheless, we have the book of Allah that is looking out for us in our heart that is calling us to stay on the sirat. So we ask Allah, ij'alna min ashab sirat al-mustaqim. May Allah Ta'ala make us from the people of sirat al-mustaqim. Fid dunya wal fil akhirah wa salawatuhu wa salamuhum ala nabihi al-mursaleen wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakum.